Hello, I'm Perry from Rennet and Rind. Happy New Year. It's 2022, 2021 out the window. I am your host for the next sort of like 15 minutes. I'm the person behind these boxes. I create these in these amazing rooms. It's all real. I'm a qualified affineur where I get to turn, brush, wash cheeses and create some of the best sort of versions of cheese. That's what I do. I tinker with cheeses, make them slightly different. I've been creating these boxes to kind of give you guys a view on how good British artisan cheese is and also like a stage through their lives and also create different matches and some things of intrigue and hopefully a beautiful board together. So like in your box, which is this thing you received in the post, if you got it for yourself or you got a gift, gifts available online make a lovely present for someone if you want to send something over to them. You get tasting notes in there, you get these five amazing cheeses, which January, I feel like everyone needs a little bit of a pick-me-up. So I kind of do things that are a little bit more um, punchy, a little bit more challenging, a little bit more exciting, and I'm more generous in January because I feel like we all need it. So yeah, really good value actually, this board. Quite an expensive board, um, but still sticking at the £32 because we want to get you guys into these amazing cheeses. And you get your biscuits as well, your Peter's Yard. My favorite cracker to have with more powerful cheeses because you kind of got to play around with them and not let the kind of the biscuit impart that flavor. So shall we dive in, you know, so let's get on our first cheese. Lincolnshire Poacher, an amazing cheese, you know. If you go into a deli and you ask for some Lincolnshire Poacher and they say, what's Lincolnshire Poacher? I would probably think about immediately leaving. I mean, it, <laughs> no, don't do that. It's like responsible for, not responsible, there's a number of them, but it's part of like the British cheese renaissance. What I wanted to do for this one, you know, this is a journey. As I always say, eat the cheeses in order because they all do something to one another and you get the best out of them. Don't pick around, eat all five in order, then do what you want, you know. So Lincolnshire Poacher is a, a, a cheddar, but also an Alpen style because the way that it's made. So it's got this really nice texture, which is a bit like Conte with some very familiar kind of views in cheddar-y kind of nest. And the Jones family that make this in Lincolnshire, you know, are phenomenal people, beautiful farm. Like you walk into their kind of first gates, the kind of cows are on your left in their shed if they're in or out. Um, you know, on the right, they've got this amazing sort of slate kind of stony building, which is beautiful. And the cheese making room at the back. And they've got these amazing maturing rooms, which are, um, are awesome. We've been working with them for some time. And this is a, a batch selected cheese. So we keep them here. I'll show you how big they are, actually. I kept one up here to show you. This is how big they are. And we keep these, turn them. But batch selected, we just kind of want to keep the flavor the same. So very much kind of hands off, make sure it's turning, all that kind of business. But yeah, let's give it a smell. That tang is there. Grassiness is there. A, a, a wide salty note is in there and a little bit of sweet nuttiness, which is kind of what we'd expect from a Lincolnshire poacher. Let's have a taste. Real, like, strength in the texture. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it'd be weaker. Good grassy notes that are coming through. Nice bit of floral hit there. Meaty, savoury, beefy. That's coming through. Tang, there we go. Typical cheddar tang that's there. So we know what's going on with that. That nuttiness coming in the back that I was talking about. Maybe we can refine that a little bit like a Brazil nut. Kind of more wholesome, I suppose. And a little bit more fatty. Um, beautiful cheese for us to start with. Um, really pleased with that. Poacher, eh? 2022, kicking off with a bang. You know, really good stuff. Next cheese up. Made by David Jowlett down in Gloucestershire. Wash rind, we've got that peachiness on the outside that makes it, gets that real breakdown. Slightly sticky, so aggressively washed, you know. I wanted to challenge you guys, I told you this, you know. I told you, we were going in to 2022, with some big flavours and some really challenging kind of stuff. So, yeah, wash rind, you know, stinky socks, that kind of thing. You know, I was always talking about fermented fruit and all that. And it's kind of like that beautiful unctuous kind of uh, texture that you're getting there i hope you guys enjoy this yeah you know it's uh, it's aggressive it's aggressive so let's give this a little taste mm, that was a big bit 
That is so meaty. That is delicious. Savory, challenging, tang, but in a different way. Really apricotty as well. That fruit that we were talking about is coming through. Wow. That's a that's a cracking cheese, that is. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that. It's something really, really special that's coming through. That's quite powerful, that is. Quite powerful. Yeah. Mm, really good. Hope you enjoy. So next cheese up, we have a Cinnadon Hill. So this is a really special cheese that I mature, actually. I call it like the seven-day turning process. So we get the cheese. It's a terrible example of the Tumworth case. But, and we turn it on its side. So we rotate it. I just use this. To make this break, because they come in quite light. But what I love is this dual texture. The kind of oozy breakdown that we have on the outside. The way they're so delicate. It really pushes the boundaries of this goat's cheese. And I think it's great. I mean, I love Look at that. I mean, I just love how unctuous that can become. And look, you see that duality that I'm talking about? Now, years ago, people used to hate that, right? So essentially, this is what, you know, and we are we disagree all the time, cheesemakers, cheesemongers. And this is what they call rind slip. So essentially, the rind is coming away from the paste and the interior of the cheese. I, the reason why you know, people first hated it was, think like... Back in the day, right, when you had to take these goat's cheese to market and you're on a cobbled road and they're bouncing everywhere and, like, you know, they're going to get damaged and people aren't going to spend as much money. But we're in a modern world where we can ex explain that. It's easier to explain. And I love the duality of this texture. We get that lactic freshness from the chalkiness that's in the middle, but we get that beautiful breakdown on the outside. So made in Oxfordshire. Um, yeah, so this is a profile that I like. So let's pop this in. Wow. Whoa. That's bloody cool. So, so powerful, so indulgent, so zingy. A little bit of goatiness in there, warning. You know, some people don't like it. I like it in this profile. I mean, I'm acting like I haven't eaten today. This cheese is so good. Um, floral notes coming in and back, saltiness that's in there. That double cream note that's in there, that cheesiness that comes about. Mm. Just trying the difference between that interior and the exterior and how salty that is and how well balanced that is and also how meaty that is. And Fantastic cheese sitting in the hill. Hope you enjoy it. We've got some big flavors going on. Next cheese up, aged Tunworth. So I've been doing these for a client. Um, where, you know, we kind of push the boundaries of where they, they go. We speed up, we, we, we lift the temperature up, high humidity, and we speed up the profiles of these. We get that breakdown on the outside of the penicillin, and we create that really challenging flavor that goes on in there. So Tumworth, right, admittedly, I love their cheeses. Stacey Hedges is a genius, you know. This is, Raymond Bloggs said this is one of the best camemberts in the world. But you can get it from Waitrose, right? You know, and I've had those, you know, and, and best respect to those kind of, you know, for doing British cheese. But they're just a little bit fresh and mild and meh to me. Um, and sometimes they can be great, but I really wanted to kind of push the boundaries with this. And, and the guy that takes it really likes these and his customers come in and have them all the time in his restaurant. So I want to share that experience with you. So we've accelerated the breakdown on the outside. We've pushed up the ammonia. So we really want to push that flavor. It accelerates the breakdown on the outside and then creates dense, aggressive flavors, right? And this is all a learning experience. Like this is the one that kind of everyone will lean towards. Go, That's quite aggressive. On the nose, it's not too bad. It's a bit peppery. There's a little bit of ammonia in the back there, but predominantly cabbagey, Brussels sprouts, yeah, you know, and we want to end on a quite an aggressive note, you know, of our sort of soft cheese before moving to the blue. That's what my thoughts were. Uh, let's give it a go. Smooth. 
once again, you know, its bark is far worse than its bite. Ammonia in flavor next to none, you know, which is the biggest concern with this cheese, and that's what we wanted to do. Eradicate the presence of ammonia, but create more aggressive flavors. You know, that cabbage you know, these, when they're younger, you know, they have more mushroomy elements to it. And I want some real depth and warmth. We're in the depths of the winter months in January, and I want to create a bit of warmth, a bit of hearty flavors. I think all the cheeses do that. Mmm. That's pretty good. I can see why people like it in his restaurant. I, I really can, because, you know, we've eradicated that presence of ammonia and pushed up those cabbage camembert flavors to be more gnarly. And I really like that. Great. Tonworth. Last cheese up, Spark and Ho Blue. So Spark and Ho Shropshire Blue, sorry. So that's made with a natto. You've got that coloring running through. The collection of blueing veins in there is well distributed. Spark and Ho are really famous for making this cheese here, which is Spark and Ho Red Leicester. The only traditional Red Leicester that's made in the UK, in my opinion. There's no real defining law against that, but that's my opinion. So I love it when they decide to make uh, Shropshire Blue with the natto. Yeah, I love that kind of story. So, you know, it's beautiful on the balls, difference in colour, real gnarly balls, you know. It's, you know I kind of wanted to end with a, another impact for January. So let's cut this off and let's, let's give it a go. Now, the texture is drier, so we've got a contrast in textures that are going on. because That's always my role. I want to make sure that it's even distributed and slightly different. Smell is light, not as pungent as the others. You know, there's that lemony um, gra grain, grains coming through, like a meal or, you know, it's kind of granular, hoppy that I always get with blues. And then there's that kind of tang, lactic tang note at the back. Let's give it a go. Mm. See, that's so pleasant to have at this moment. And this is why the journey is so important. That lactic freshness that we we're talking about, the slightly... It was seemingly drier texture, but it's not because that freshness comes in, coats the palate. And it's a real nice contrast to have. You know, most blues are deep and savory and aggressive, but we provided that with our four other cheeses, you know. And this one, yeah, does that nice full stop to try in your cheeses. Fantastic. Really, uh, I really mean this. I think that's a really ba good batch of five cheeses. That's right up my street and my kind of like 100% ball that I like. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. Um, any questions, you guys give us a shout. Hit us up on social media, you know, Rennet and Rhines. Just Google search us and we'll come up. Obviously, always love to chat cheese. So if you've got events coming up or anything like that, or you just want some advice, give us a call. We'd love to have a chat. So thank you once again for supporting British Artisan Cheese, you know, and supporting us as a business. So awesome. Enjoy those five cheeses. They're challenging, but they're pretty awesome. Thanks a lot. Bye.